Welcome home, horror fans. My name's Adam. And I'm Zoe. And these are the 10 most deserving trap victims in the Saw franchise. That's right. We're looking at the 10 most deserving victims to ever be put into a trap in the Saw franchise. Over all of the films and all of the years, we've seen many traps and many victims, but these are the guys who deserved it the most. The most. The and most. there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. There so is. we had uh, we had to narrow this down because obviously out of all the different trap victims, 10 is not that many. But I think we have a pretty strong contending list for the top I 10. I think we definitely do as well. Absolutely. So starting off with number 10, a name that you guys are all pretty familiar with is William Easton. William Easton. You are a goddamn criminal. Those are the rules, Harold. I'm sorry. Now, William Easton was put into a trap because he was denying coverage to terminally ill people. It's a hard egg to crack because he really is just doing his job. But this is the sad side of the world that we live in with health in health insurance. And this is like the sad reality of it, I guess. And of course, as you see it unfold on screen, you hate William Easton. And you Jeez. hate like the decisions he's making. I um, mean, you hate the fact that Brent Abbott's and, and Tara Abbott's husband and father die, uh, all because William Easton has said, well, I'm not going to cover you. Um, but this is the sad reality of life. So in a sense, you choose who lives or dies. Very well chosen by John in this scenario. Uh, and that brings us to number nine. At number nine, we have Eric Matthews, who is tested for police brutality. Those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life. Oh, shit. Eric Matthews, another very big character, and a character we love. We actually love. We love Eric much Matthews. like uh, much like William Easton. You know, yeah. uh, he's not a good guy. He's no. he's not a good guy. He framed many innocent people, including the very prolific Amanda, of course. Definitely framed the wrong people, got himself into a very bad position with John Kramer. Definitely. And as somebody who's quite a corrupt cop, uh, the cool thing about him being tested was we got to see more of his relationship with his son and this is what really sort of plays out heavily in Saw 2 with Daniel being put into the main trap and really just there to cause Eric harm and yeah. grief uh, but Eric himself definitely deserved to be tested because there was a lot of things he was doing wrong yeah Daniel is really put there to get Eric a little bit loopy and a little bit crazy and to bring out Eric's true colours shut the fuck up it's almost like a family Christmas special when you see the way he gets so emotional about Daniel when he's missing and he really just wants to save him. It's yeah. such a difference between him sort of wanting to get rid of Daniel Telling at the start him of the to film. go home yeah. versus, That's right. you know, really, really caring for him. That's and, right. So John's just, John's just trying to bring that family together with this yeah. trap. You know, he's really just trying to make oh, him John's such a value. saint, isn't he? He is. He's a good guy when you think about it. It was he a is. funny prank to put Daniel in that safe, but all he was trying to do was trying to save that family unit because that's what he's all about. Yeah, You know, absolutely. so a great spot. Uh, certainly not the worst of worst, but definitely somebody who is deserving of his test. Speaking of the worst of worst. <laughs> Bringing us to number eight, we have Bobby Dagan. <laughs> I hate Bobby Dagan. I hate Bobby Dagan. Everybody hates Bobby Dagan. Why was Bobby Dagan tested? Bobby Dagan was tested because he pretended to be a jigsaw victim and profited massively off that. Made a whole career out of it, in fact. Yeah. Now, this is a pretty good reason, again, to be put into a test. This is a great reason. If someone said that they were in a test, well, may as well actually put one, put him into one. That's yep. a fantastic excuse. All while Jigsaw is at large as well. Yes. He's continuing to profit and go on his little interviews and his book tour. Probably not a good idea not to a be good idea. making up lies about a serial killer when that serial killer is at large. And it's not going to end up very well. And it doesn't. Uh, but another great choice. This is a really great choice on Jigsaw's part. You know, he doesn't make always great choices, but this is a perfect choice. Definitely a great way to show Bobby maybe this is not the best way to do things. No. A great way to maybe rehabilitate him in a way and really show him that uh, what he's doing is wrong. Unfortunately, as much as we don't like Bobby Dagan, uh, he gets it a little bit easy. He's somebody that uh, has a lot of his friends and family die but he sort of gets off pretty scot-free. I'd say, yeah, it's hard because he does sit there and he witnesses his wife die in a horrible death. He witnesses all of his friends die. He has to pull out a tooth. He has to actually pierce his pectoral muscles like he lied about doing. Mm. So he does go through the runner a bit. However, the fact that he survives is so unsatisfying to me. I would have much rather have seen William Easton survive and make a life for himself 
rather than Bobby, especially after his poor innocent wife has died just for being associated with him. That's right. Yeah. Do you believe that Bobby was rehabilitated at all after this? I mean, let's be honest, he probably was, yeah. but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, rehabilitated or not, he he needs to die. Yes, I think the problem with uh, Bobby was he was just an overall unlikable character. Very unlikable You know, character. is there any Bobby fans out there? If there is, let us know in the comments, but I don't think there's I one. I highly doubt it. I don't it. think there's I one person that's like, I love Bobby. Uh, William Easton, relatively likable, even though he's a bit despicable. And same with Eric Matthews, like, yeah. Phenomenal in, in certain ways. But Bobby was just straight up unlikable in every terrible, single way. Terrible, terrible um, character. You could say a few reasons why, but let's not go into it. Bobby himself, unlikable, definitely deserved to be in that sort of trap. And uh, yeah, another great choice by Jigsaw in this scenario, which uh, brings us to number seven. At number seven, we have Cecil Adams, who was tested for causing the death of Gideon. Fuck you. <laughs> Now, Cecil is somebody who's just a pretty much damn right bad guy. This is not a good guy. Yeah, Cecil is definitely a character that causes a bit of destruction to everyone and anything around him. Um, we see this from the flashback that's in Saw 4 where he's sitting in the waiting room and just causing an absolute ruckus and pulling out a knife and John confronts him there. Um, this is all before he even gets his hand on Jill uh, to kill Gideon, unfortunately. But, um, mm. yeah, just a complete and utter waste of, of life <laughs> he's not a, he's not a good guy no. he's not somebody that you want to be hanging around with and like you said anybody that hangs around with him is probably going to be pulled down to his level and this yeah. is what happens to amanda of course uh she definitely needed the help from john to get herself out of there probably didn't end up in any better place really killing no. people but uh certainly at least got her out of the sort of drug addled uh, uh, life that was that was going on with cecil cecil yes killing an unborn child not a great thing. Uh, and if it's the unborn child of Jigsaw himself, you best believe you're probably going to get put in a trap. And he did. And he did. So he did. not really surprising You put in there. one of the more grotesque ones. I think that the realness of Cecil's trap sitting in that knife chair and seeing him push his face on it and the knives coming between the slits of his eyes, it's just, it's not pretty to watch. Yeah, you 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 really do believe that that knife trap is quite a, quite a trap. I think the knife trap is just so easy to imagine how it would feel. Mm. Uh, and it's not pretty. It's excruciating. And it looks fairly real I'd say that the, how they shoot it and how they do their effects with well it, it, it it is very well done it looks fairly real well done yeah so I'd say absolutely not I would not want to be in that <laughs> trap one bit which brings us to number six Detective Halloran I tampered with evidence I, I took bribes I put innocent people away ugh Halloran was tested very similar to Eric Matthews, Eric Matthews yeah. he was also a corrupt cop which this franchise is full of corrupt cops. Yeah. Uh, but this guy, he was somebody that not, not only did actually kind of do the opposite of Eric, actually. So he actually did tamper with evidence, but he let a lot of criminals go. Yeah. And he actually let uh, a particular criminal go, Edgar Munson, who ended up uh, having a, a part to play in the killing of Logan's wife. Yeah. So even worse than killing an unborn baby, if you're killing a Jigsaw Disciple's wife you're probably going to end up in a trap. Yeah. And also a pretty good reason to be on this list. Uh, somebody who's letting killers go and causing more havoc, definitely an easy choice too. Yeah, definitely an easy choice. And also just his overall demeanor. Like, he's not <laughs> a very nice person. He's presented horribly. He's just a downright asshole. Yes. And he 100% des deserves to be on this list. Yeah, Halloran is just, not, like I said, he's an asshole. He's just, oh, he's just terrible. We he hate is the, terrible. He's just a character we do not like. I don't know if he's as bad as Gibson, but he's terrible. I want to say that we don't like Gibson either, but Halloran is just garbage. Oh, <laughs> Gibson oh, is, really? Yeah, Gibson is funny. He's crazy. Crazy. He's downright insane, and I wish we could delete him from existence. <laughs> but Halloran just annoys me. Like, it makes me angry. Just like, he's somebody that when he's on the screen, you're like, turn this off or skip this chapter. <laughs> Because Halloran is literally just, like, hot garbage. He's terrible. I would honestly say that Gibson is worse. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No way. <laughs> I think the thing about Gibson is as much, like I said, as bad as he is, at least you can kind of laugh at it. Yeah. You know? It's yeah, funny. 
Because I live for sore, funny moments, you mm-hmm. know? And there's a lot of funny moments. And Gibson is terrible, but at least he brings the funny. He's in 50% of those funny moments. Oh, yeah. Every scene he's in is funny. The funniest one's when he gets killed by a machine gun. That's really <laughs> hilarious. It's really good. But, uh, but uh, oh, Halloran, he is not funny once. He is no. the most boring. He's insufferable. He's he hard to insufferable watch. Insufferable is probably the best way to label him. Yeah. And realistically, we should put him at number one because deserving is definitely something that this piece of garbage is is. <laughs> For sure. Moving on to number five. At number five, we have sex, sex. <laughs> Sexy Baxter. <laughs> Sexy Baxter. At number five, we have Seth Baxter, who is tested for murdering Mark Hoffman's sister. Hello, Seth. Right now, you're feeling helpless. And wouldn't you know, another person who had his hand in killing a Jigsaw slash Jigsaw Disciples partner or relative... Uh, in this scenario... And isn't it funny that they fight, both find themselves in unwinnable traps? Well, that's the thing, right? I think if you're involved in killing anyone from their baby slash unborn baby, their partner, their sibling, of course you're going to end up in a trap. As much as these guys like to talk about not retribution, there seems to be a very common theme of anybody messing with them being put into a trap. Very common theme, it yeah. feels like. Now, that being said, Seth Baxter is a terrible guy. He is a terrible guy. He is in prison for a slew of small crimes, I believe. Mm. Uh, gets out of prison, murders Angelina Acom, who is uh, Mark Hoffman's sister, gets sent back to prison, but gets out on a technicality. And so Hoffman takes matters into his own hands, and I don't bloody blame him. That's right. And of all of the jigsaw disciples themselves to be crossing Hoffman's the last one you want to be crossing definitely you know and Hoffman's very emotional about this one uh, especially when he's describing it to John Kramer you didn't see the blood oh it's Uh, such a powerful scene it's a great scene and it really gives us this uh, fantastic emotional depth from Hoffman so it really opens up the character it's part of the reason we love Hoffman of course Mm -hmm. getting to see the reason that drove him to become a killer it all started with Seth Baxter and the and the death of his sibling and it's fantastic isn't it funny about seth baxter's death is at the it it happens in the opening of the film it happens in you know that's the opening kill yeah, yeah, of yeah. saw five so at this point you kind of feel bad for this guy because like oh he's really copying it like this is a really bad oh, we don't death. know him yet we don't know him yet and then when you see the photos of angelina and how she was killed and the brutality of it all what brutality no pun intended <laughs> do you like that brutality leave, feels, leave me alone Mark? eric matthews please <laughs> Uh, but when you see how Seth Baxter kills Angelina, it's just like, yeah, he deserved it. That's right. He we don't it. have uh, any sympathy for what happened to Seth Baxter after we found out what he did no. and what kind of person he was. If anything, we had sympathy for Hoffman. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, this is a, an easy choice of a trap victim. Somebody who was just damn right, not a good guy. No. Not uh, one bit. And luckily, we don't have to deal with him for too long on screen. He's just shown as he's killed. Uh, we don't want to be knowing this guy. He's just a bad guy. Easy choice for this list. He, again, messed with the wrong person. And uh, he created Mark Hoffman. Created Mark Hoffman. Well, we like him for that. And we love him for that. <laughs> we love Seth Baxter. We love Seth Baxter. We change our minds. <laughs> uh, moving on to number four, we have Anna from Jigsaw. Now, Anna was tested for killing her baby and framing her husband for the murder of her baby. And then her husband kills himself. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a horrible crime, this one. This one's really bad. What makes it really, really particularly bad is that she does all of this and seems incredibly unremorseful about it. Definitely very unremorseful. It's almost like she suppresses the memory of it, kind of. Well, so it's, she doesn't even think about it. You could say that, but it, it's it almost just feels like she's psychotic. It yeah. comes across as like somebody who murdered somebody and then just pretended like she never did it and yeah. almost believes her own lies as well. And I think that's the big thing. It's one thing to do something like what she did, but also to pretty much act like you never did it. Yeah is really, really it's bad. It's rough. You know? It's rough. You wouldn't say it so much if she was very cut up over it, but she was not cut up over it no, at all. No, not one bit. Yeah, terrible, terrible character. Well performed, I mm-hmm. will say. She really brought that character to life, and I think that was one of the better characters in the movie. Absolutely. But definitely a horrible character and did something really bad as well. So one of the better choices, one of the better trap victims, definitely. I don't know how much you can rehabilitate somebody like this. No, someone like this I don't think can be saved. No. I think that 
they just need to go to prison for the rest of them, their lives. Possibly, There's maybe no cancelling. Or maybe be put in a death trap. <laughs> maybe put in a death trap. Yeah, either or. I either. mean, it definitely proved more so what kind of person she was. You can see this personality of her coming out, the way she obviously tried to kill someone else to save herself in Jigsaw. Mm -hmm. It definitely just showed more of her character and definitely. developed her more. Didn't do the opposite, didn't make her a better person. Um, so an easy choice uh, to be placed in this list. Uh, which brings us to the top three. Now we're getting to the real we're bad at the guys. Top three. I'll kick us off. Number three, we have Cecilia. She was tested for scamming terminally ill people. You promised dying people. Dying people! You could save their lives. Now, now that Sorex is part of the franchise, we can happily add Cecilia to the list of big bads. Somebody who you guys probably knew this was coming. Definitely one of the most deserved people to be put into a test. Yeah, she's horrendous. But horrendous. again, another one of those characters that we really enjoy seeing on screen. Oh, we great love character. love her performance. She's yeah. a great character. She's so well fleshed out. But that doesn't take away from the fact that she is horrific. She's horrific. horrible. Yeah, this is somebody who uses her amazing intellect uh, to really do wrong by a lot of people. So she's incredibly smart and a fantastic nemesis for John Kramer. But she definitely not just goes ahead and uh, basically fucks over a bunch of terminally ill people, but she also kills Gabriella, which yep. just so uncalled for and unnecessary. Very, very uncalled for. And this towards the end of this movie, the, these scenes start to show how horrible she really is and yeah. how unremorseful she is for everything she's done and how she doesn't care and she just wants her money back. That's, That's right. Um, and this paints Cecilia out to be the worst. The worst. The worst. She also has a really great moment in the film in which she explains to John that she doesn't give a shit about her rest of her team let's say dying because she just feels like the piece of the pie is bigger for her now and she yeah. doesn't have to pay them so she's she's got multiple layers of scamming absolutely no empathy or sympathy for the people around her she doesn't really seem to have any friends she just doesn't really care she can kill off anyone from sears himself to the rest of the people that work with her yeah she's got no interest she really doesn't care for human life at all there no. is absolutely no regard for it she will kill anyone who gets in the way of a penny so an easy choice definitely one of the best landed choices. her top three spot definitely one of the best choices a great villain for the latest film I think they really nailed it with her um, some people think maybe over the top but really really I think well done and we're excited to see more from Saw 11 so definitely. an easy pick for a top three contestant and uh, she will live on in infamy as well, being one of the most evil characters in Saw for sure, for sure. yeah absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which brings us to number two and at number two we have a name which you guys have probably been waiting for us to say in this most deserving list. And that name is Ivan Landness. Your eyes which have led you blindly astray or your body. I hate Ivan. <laughs> Ivan is a character that not only is a really horrible guy, but he is somebody as a character that we really dislike as well. Yeah. We don't care to see any more of him than we have to. Ivan's a very hard character. So he's placed into his test uh, for raping at least three people, multiple people, it seems. Seems to be a lot more. By the amount of photos yeah. and footage that are found at the scene of the crime. Um, but Ivan is a character that I'll always sort of resent Saw for, for having in the film. I he's not a fun character. He's not a fun character. There's nothing fun about him. There's no redeeming quality about him. Mm. He is just there purely to shock us and purely to be horrible. That's right. And I will say, I'll give him credit where credit's due. His death and the way he dies is amazing. Grotesque. It's grotesque. It's everything that Cecilia should have gone through. It's everything that Bobby Dagan should have gone through. Like, these deaths, are, are, these traps are what you would expect these super, super bad characters to, to be in. Um, so I will say that Ivan's death was incredible. I just don't like him as a character, and That's I just right. don't think he was necessary to have in the franchise. Yeah, and the thing is about Ivan, and I think we can say this about a few characters in Saw 4, but specifically Ivan is that the guys who wrote Saw 4, or, or at least created Ivan, kind of missed the point of Saw. And mm -hmm. I think that the real fans, you guys watching right now, the real hardcore guys, really understand what the franchise is about. And the franchise is about fun, okay? Mm -hmm. People who are on the outside looking in, they think that Saw is some sort of torture porn movie or something like that. 
It's not that at all. No. It's actually a, about watching the movies for fun. And we all really have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's character dynamics. The traps are just fun. The ideologies, the philosophical questions about why you'd be put in a trap. Mm -hmm. The traps are you, like, how do I survive that trap? Is it fair? All of these different things that are coming into play here. And when we watch it, we watch it with a smile on our face because it's a lot of cool and fun ideas. Ivan is not cool. He's not fun. He's not a he's not a, an interesting character. There's nothing we don't love him. It. He's just literally just a piece of garbage. He's a real world piece he's of garbage. He's a real world character true. and that's the problem. He was made as somebody who was just a straight up horrible person. And Saw is not about that. Saw does not grab, oh, this guy raped a bunch of people. Oh, this guy beheaded a girl. Like, it's not like it finds just horrible people doing horrible crimes and puts them into traps. That's not Saw. Saw no. is like, hey, you called it a sick? Have some flammable jelly. It's yep. just ridiculousness. And that is the funny thing about Saw. It's really cool and interesting victims, people doing crazy stuff, and maybe it is something. It's almost like a daytime movie sometimes because this character is this guy's sibling and this person's parent and that person's, yeah. you know, it's there's all that stuff. There's a lot of connection between the characters yeah. and there's a lot of character building. There's a lot of effort into the writing and rewriting and rewriting of the retcons and erasing them. And, and Ivan just feels like a really poorly written character and someone who was just put together in no amount of time There's at no all. fun. There's no thought about his character at all. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we just chuck this rapist in there? Like, that would be fun. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you missed the mark with this character. I don't think that past Saw 4, they really did this, they didn't really sort of, you know, have this fault going forward very much. No. They, they generally had a lot more fun with the characters. And that's the important thing. We want to see people in traps, not because they did just something gross, you know, that's not interesting. No one's having a good laugh about Ivan. It's really just we want something fun, interesting, or something that connects to the story as a whole, which is what Saw X did really, really, really well. Um, but Ivan, obviously a terrible guy, obviously very deserving of his trap. Um, so much so, we don't want to even hear about it. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, enough of characters like this. We don't want to see him anymore. Definitely one of the most deserving. Just a horrible piece of garbage. You guys knew he was going to be on this list. We put him at number two because there's one more left. And with one more spot left. Who now, will it be? Who will it be? Because you may have think that we've put everyone on here already. Yeah, Ivan. Been. Probably the worst guy, right? Right. Who could beat out that? This is a tough one. Cecilia three, Ivan number two. <gasps> this is the guy who now you try and guess because we gave you guys to guess before and you always can't do it. Try and guess. Pause it. Write down who is the number one worst character. Who's the guy who deserved to be put into a trap? To us, this wasn't hard. That's right. This was actually a really easy pick. He's uh, a character you guys know very well. Very well. Uh, he's had a lot of screen time. And uh, who is that character, Zoe? At number one, we have Jigsaw himself. Tested for testing people. Killing is distasteful. Me. Now, okay. <laughs> whoa, Before whoa, whoa, you whoa, throw whoa. your computer through the <laughs> window, <laughs> this is an obvious one, okay? In Saw X, he was actually placed into a test. And I tell you what, the reason behind him being the most deserving is he has killed and tortured an audible amount of people. I mean, we're talking and about, and no one even knows how many people he's killed at this point. Look, we can we can say that some of them were deserving. We went through some of the Absolutely. deserving ones in this list. But for the most part, these people are genuinely good people that have just gone down a bad path. Uh, or not even that. And not even that. And it doesn't matter whether they were deserving or not. John is still torturing and murdering people and tasking other people to do the same. And you may be wondering why we haven't included people like jo uh, Amanda or Mark or any other of his disciples. And that's purely because they wouldn't exist without He John. created them. He created these people. So not only has he left behind a trail of bodies as yes. long as my arm, <laughs> longer than my arm, yes. uh, he's created disciples, he's ruined people's lives, he's killed a bunch of cops that didn't deserve it. That's <laughs> yes, true. Uh, he's just caused overall havoc for anyone who lives in within his radius. Yeah, he's he's somebody who, look, at the end of the day, we love John Kramer. We love Jigsaw, Yeah, obviously. that's not to say that we don't love that John. That goes without question. He is definitely one of the best characters out there of any horror character. 
But he's also definitely one of the most deserving people. This is a guy who straight up killed more people than anyone on this list. If even if you want to add up all the people who got killed uh, from all the different trap victims, they don't even come near to the total amount of people that he killed. And not only that, but the torture that he also set up. We're not just talking about like torture for people who deserved it. We're talking about people who, for instance, the character in Amanda's Trap who got gutted just because he had a key in his stomach. He didn't have a choice. You've the got people from the gallows and people William, in the gallows that we, trap. that we brought up uh, in our other video. There's, there are so many people that didn't deserve to be in a traps uh, to be in a trap, and they were not only killed, they were tortured. Joyce Dagan got burnt alive just for being a a wife to somebody. There are so many people that he tortured and murdered for no reason at all. And look, you can be drinking his Kool-Aid if you want and believe what he says when he's like, I don't kill people. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, he's the biggest murderer out there and definitely the most deserving of a trap. And you know what? When we saw him in that trap in Sorex, it still broke our heart. Yeah, and it's definitely not to say that we hate John. We love John. John is a great character. He's the character that started it all. But he's definitely a horrible person, and his morals are very, very questionable. Yeah, which is why he's such a great character. When you have a character who, you know, he has an ideology and believes them wholeheartedly, it's fantastic when his, you know, whole ideology is false and he doesn't quite get that. Yeah. It's even better. Like it's a it's an even better character who thinks that he's all, that he's doing nothing but good in the world when he's actually doing wrong. And it's a pretty popular thing. I think you get that amongst a lot of super villains. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's not a guy you'd want to know in real life. Definitely not. But in terms of a horror movie fantastic we love him we absolutely love the Give character us more. and the fact that he deserves his spot only makes us love him more uh we don't want any harm to come to him at all we don't want to see any more traps or any sort of pain to come to him in Saw 11 uh, that being said it doesn't mean he doesn't deserve it at the end of the day he's definitely the biggest killer to ever grace the screen and in the a Saw deserving. movie and you can't debate the fact that he is not the biggest killer and biggest torturer to ever be in a Saw film. So that was our list for the top 10 most deserving characters in the Saw franchise of a trap. Uh, if you disagree with this list, as you always do, please let us know in the comments. We did have to cut a few people out of this list, obviously, as usual. So if there's anybody you think that should have been in this list, definitely let us know. And maybe even if there's uh, an actual top 10 exact ranking that you would like to share with us at the bottom, we do read all the comments and we'd love to know exactly yeah, how you place Yeah, let's compare them and let's see where you would place Jigsaw in your top 10 list. That's right, that's right. So otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. See you next time, guys. Game over. Ah!